Uh, so a few more slides on hydropneumatic tanks. These are some of the advanced options that are available for hydropneumatic tanks. So a dipping tube and a vented tank. So the dipping tube on the left side uh, consists of a, a, a tube that comes down from the top that goes not all the way down to the bottom, uh, but maybe you know somewhere in between the top and the bottom of the tank, so that once water starts coming into the tank, uh, initially that water uh, it's acting as if it's a, just a regular tank because there's a free there's a free surface at the top. This little icon is basically uh, like an air valve. So when it's first starting to fill, it's acting you know it's able to fill uh, just as if it was a tank. And then once the water surface elevation reaches the bottom of the dipping tube, then the air on you know around the sides of it becomes compressed. And above that point, it's basically a, a just like a, a normal hydropneumatic tank, and the water surface elevation will rise up in the middle of the uh, the, the dipping tube itself and get to the point where if it reaches the top, then that's closed off, and then it's a sealed. Uh, you know, uh, pressurized gas vessel. So a vented hydropneumatic tank is one that has uh, compressed gas at the top, but also has a little air valve at the top that can let air in and, uh, and, and out. So let me switch back over to Hammer to show you these two options. So there are scenarios, again, in this sample file here, hydropneumatic tank example, there's a scenario for dipping tube and a scenario for vented. So if you look at dipping tube, it's the same model configuration, it's just different, uh, basically a different transient alternative uh, for each of these scenarios with, with different configurations of the hydropneumatic tank. So in this case, the hydropneumatic tank type is set to dipping tube, so the default is sealed, that's your standard hydropneumatic tank type. But dipping tube gives you a whole bunch of different fields here where you enter you know, the diameter of, of all those different components I was just showing, so the dipping tube diameter, um, the uh, you know the elevation of the top and the bottom of the dipping tube and things like that and from all that information and from the initial uh, pressure and volume it can tell and be able to track you know as the tank is filling or draining um, it knows the point at which it becomes a uh, a, a compressed uh, gas vessel versus a regular tank so it's uh, it's a bit tricky to set these up, but I know they are used in some cases, and in some situations they can be better. Um, I think the dipping tube type is used more often in sewer force mains. Um, you know, it usually contains an air valve at the top to open to the atmosphere, and uh, I think the the vented type. You know, I'm not sure of an exact situation in particular that. Uh, it will be used, but you know, in some situations, in some areas, or uh, you know, for for certain regions, uh, different types of tanks are more popular than others. Uh, so Hammer has the flexibility to model a lot of different uh, tanks. And if there's one that you want to model that you know we don't have an exact method for it, uh, you know, a, a specific um, type like dipping to vented, maybe you have something that's a little bit different, it doesn't entirely conform. Um, I would say, you know, for that, and, and generally speaking, what you want to do is make some, some sort of conservative assumption um, and, and model it using the input that you do have available to you. So, you know, make some type of conservative guess as to the input and use one of the available methods um, as an approximation and go from there. Okay, so next slide. Uh, as far as modeling these hydropneumatic tanks uh, during the initial conditions, which is your steady state or EPS, so um, you know, liquid level can, it can fluctuate. If you again, you know, depending on how you're using these things. So if you're using it as a as a tank that will actually fill and drain during normal operations, then the level can fluctuate, and the initial condition solver will handle that. So basically, a hydropneumatic tank will act as a hydropneumatic tank, even in WaterCAD or water gems. You know, your steady state or EPS. Um, it gives you two different options as far as how it's treated during the initial conditions. So the first method is called the constant area approximation and the other one is called the gas law model. So I'll switch back to hammer again. So you'll notice on, it, this is under the physical section of the properties, which 
uh, follows the format of you know, anything that's specific to a transient simulation is under the transient section and the information under the physical section if it's under there you can tell that it also applies to the initial conditions so here you have a tank calculation model gas law versus constant area so constant area approximation basically treats the hydrodynamic tank in the initial conditions as is just a skinny tall uh, normal tank so you basically add um, an HGL on and an HGL off and the volume between it and it treats it as a basically a, a tall skinny tank and this was the traditional method of modeling these things in, in older versions of WaterCAD and water gems that didn't have a dedicated uh, gas vessel element so you'd bas basically use a regular tank element and uh, make it really tall and skinny so that you know you're even though you know that the hyd it's not built that tall the model is allowed to have a high hydraulic grade in your tank um, so it doesn't exactly follow the gas law but um, that was the way of approximating it so we basically have this here as a, as a legacy option so if you had an old model um, that had a tank set up that way you could convert it to a hydropneumatic tank element and still maintain those same results uh, and be able to use it and have it treated as a hydropneumatic tank with the gas law uh, during the transient simulation in hammer so when you choose gas law model then the relationship between pressure and volume is calculated based on the gas law PV equals uh, NRT which is simplified down to PV equals K so um, from there it's there's less input because you don't have to specify a you know a, that tall skinny tank uh, configuration you just enter you know the, the total volume of that tank uh, what is the initial liquid volume and from that it knows what the initial gas volume is and from the initial HGL or if you're choosing true for treat as junction it will know what the initial hydraulic rate is and therefore be able to establish that relationship between pressure and volume uh, during the EPS so if you're running like a 24-hour EPS uh, simulation uh, maybe a one-hour time step you'll be able to have that hydro you know hydro pneumatic tank fill and drain even during an EPS um, the problem you run into there is that these things tend to fill and drain so quickly because you know if you follow the gas law you know as you add water you know as you increase the water volume and decrease that gas volume you're going to have a pretty um, a relatively large change in pressure so they, they tend to fill so to speak uh, and drain much faster so you usually need a smaller time step to be able to capture those changes otherwise it could, it could actually overshoot your control ranges and give you some uh, strange results so you know if you are using a hydro pneumatic tank during an EPS or like in WaterCAD or water gems um, definitely a good idea to use a very small time step uh, but again though usually in hammer you're just running a steady state and in that case there's really not much as far as uh, initial conditions results because all the initial conditions needs is that uh, initial hydraulic grade and again that's either established by setting treat as junction to true and just letting it you know compute that that sort of floating uh, you know steady pressure or if you have it set to false then you have to enter the initial hydraulic grade just as you would for a tank you enter the, the minimum maximum and the initial uh, level or hydraulic grade so getting back to our slide so uh, power failure so you know this is a common case where a hydropneumatic tank would be used you have a pump that has some type of emergency uh, shutdown event such as a, a power failure and what happens is that down surge wave will uh, propagate downstream from that sudden change in momentum the pressure may be you know would otherwise become negative but when you include a hydropneumatic tank on the downstream side of your pump then you have that uh, that gas that's you know that stored energy there that's able to you know release the water volume from the tank and maintain a positive pressure and again you know once you have any sort of upsurge events or reflected pressure waves they this type of tank can absorb those as well um, as far as tracking the actual water surface elevation inside the tank that's usually not something that is needed and um, hammer basically assumes 
that it is a fixed elevation by default. So uh, traditionally and by default, there's a calculation uh, option, or rather a, a property of the tank that's called the elevation type, and that by default it's set to fixed, which means that the uh, water surface elevation is assumed to be equal to the, the, the bottom of the tank. And that's usually an okay assumption because we're talking about hydraulic grades, uh, you know, when you're, when you're thinking of the pressure as a pressure head, uh, that tends to dwarf the, the changes in water level. So, you know, maybe your tank is built, uh, you know, five feet tall, you might have changes in pressure in that tank on the order of, you know, hundreds of feet. So usually the, you know, being able to track and compute the, the change in water surface elevation really has uh, usually is an insignificant impact compared to the, the pressure head variations. Uh, but it's something to be aware of is that by default we assume it's it's equal to the bottom. And part of the reason for that is because you know to be able to accurately track the actual water surface elevation you need a little bit more information. So um, the third option that you see in the slide here called variable elevation that allows you to enter basically uh, you know the elevation area table of your uh, hydrodynamic tank so you know sometimes there's a curved bottom to it so as you start from the bottom and work your way up the the effective you know area where the water surface could occupy uh, changes it's usually not just a you know uh, straight walled uh, you know tank there's usually a, a curve to the side so you have to you know define that table of equivalent diameter. Um, so you have to enter that and with that information then it is able to track, you know, as liquid is actually entering or leaving the hydropneumatic tank, it can track that change in the the, the gas liquid interface, the, the water surface elevation. And that can have a slight impact on the gas law calculations because, you know, the pressure will be, uh, you know, slightly different, but again, usually insignificant compared to uh, those pressure head variations. If you're ever in doubt, um, as it goes with most things, you know, try both ways. Do a sensitivity analysis. If you're not sure if, you know, it's something that might be significant, you know, maybe put in a, just a rough estimate of the variable elevation curve, uh, compare the transient results to the default of fixed and if you don't see much of a difference then well you don't have to worry about you know getting an exact variable elevation curve. So here's uh, an example this is the same network that was shared in one of the previous slide decks where uh, there was no protection and this is showing uh, the impact if you remember it, most of it was was red which was basically indicating um, a color coding of I think minimum pressure. So now this is basically saying, you know, if you were to install a hydropneumatic tank here in this type of system, uh, there's a lot more green. There's, you know, the, the results are better. Uh, they, they are usually pretty effective. So as far as conclusions uh, for hydropneumatic tanks, they definitely require a little bit of experience. Um, you know, th there's a lot more moving parts, uh, so to speak, with these things. It's not just, uh, you know, a, a simple thing. You have to, you know, there's some considerations there both in you know designing something that would work and also being able to maintain it uh, the cost uh, places to put it things like that um, and you know if you do decide to use one of these then as with you know other things it's always a good idea to communicate any type of surge control strategies uh, to you know stakeholders uh, operators management things like that and uh, you know, make sure that everyone is aware of how they should work, and to make sure that, um, especially any any safety features, are not uh, inadvertently defeated. Let me show you something here. This model is already calculated, and um, I mentioned this before, but there's this report period field here, and this is a property of some of the different element types, like pumps have it, uh, hydropneumatic tanks have it, turbines have it. If you enter a number here, you'll get some extended results in your transient results viewer. So I've already computed this model. So in the transient results viewer, maybe I haven't tried again. Oh, I switched scenarios. Uh, let me go back to the one I computed. Okay, so you'll notice 
There's a third tab that you may not have seen yet called the extended node data. And for a hydropneumatic tank, you can graph a few extra things like gas volume, um, gas pressure, water inflow. So in this case, you'll see I have the elevation type set to fixed, the default. So not the variable or the mean. It's, it is set to fixed. But I can still uh, certainly calculate, uh, or rather um, report on the gas volume over time. So if I click on plot, you'll see it's, it's definitely tracking the, the volume of gas and water uh, coming in and out. It's just assuming that um, you know the the water surface elevation is is equal to the bottom of the tank. So you know as far as uh, changes in pressure and volume are concerned, um, it's it's using that as as sort of the datum point. Uh, it, it's it's a you know a simplistic thing, and again usually an okay assumption because of the fact that the, the variations in pressure head, which I can probably show you here. So this is the Okay, I don't have it as an endpoint here, but we can we can see pressure. So if I plot pressure as a as a uh, you know, length unit, this may not be the best example, but you know we're we're seeing some you know pretty big variations as far as um, pr this is in metric units, but you know the variations in pressure that you usually get for a hydropneumatic tank usually uh, dwarf the the variations in um, you know actual water surface elevation. So it's usually okay to just assume. You know that uh, water surface elevation is, is always equal to the bottom, and you know we know the relationship between pressure and volume because we have the initial pressure, we have the initial volume, um, which could be entered a number of different ways. You know, as I s showed you with the bladder in this case, you know that initial gas volume is established by way of the preset pressure and the full tank volume, but if it's just a standard tank without a bladder, then that initial gas volume. Uh, is basically a user entered thing. So you have the full tank volume and you have the liquid volume initial. The difference between the two is the uh, gas volume initial. So it, it has the information it needs to uh, ha have that relationship between pressure and volume. And so, you know, during the transient simulation, as water is entering the tank or leaving the tank, it's able to track, you know, that what's the change in volume. And, and because I know that relationship from the gas law, it knows what is the change in pressure. So it doesn't really uh, need to know where the water surface elevation is necessarily. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.